for me, um, the, the generalizability uh, outside of our institution is not clear. So the question is, can you replicate what you've done in other centers? And I think this is a really interesting part. A lot of the palliative care interventions seem to be somewhat dependent upon individuals delivering the, the intervention. And so uh, the, and the, the, we had a palliative care nurse practitioner who actually started as a heart failure nurse practitioner then went and ran a hospice for a little bit and then came back now and is a palliative care nurse practitioner. So she had a very unique skill set for the trial. I don't know if I can take the PAL intervention and plop it into another institution and hope to get those same kinds of benefits. So I think that PAL really probably is, um, should be best considered as a pilot study to give us an idea of the kind of, of um, intervention that might be beneficial, but I think the thing that we really need to do next is extend that out and do a multi-center trial where there are different kinds of institutions, different kinds of patients, and different, um, different uh, individuals administering the intervention to see if we get the same kind of effect. Yeah, I think we're really starting to have conversations with uh, people around the country right now about whether or not we are going to try to get some sort of funding mechanism to do a multi-center trial. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the meeting has really been terrific and it's been fun to watch the Heart Flare Society grow over the last, you know, 10 or 20 years. I th the quality of the science that's being presented at this meeting has gone up significantly. And we're really starting to see um, important trials and, and sub-studies of trials being presented um, at the meeting. So I, I think that uh, in the late breaking clinical trials yesterday, we saw a couple of uh, studies presented that suggested that that the beneficial effects of tolvaptan may not have been quite as exciting as originally uh, thought. And that it, when you look at some endpoints like breathlessness, that it doesn't seem to have a, a beneficial effect relative to standard care. Um, and the interesting part of those observations was that it was not aligned with the amount of fluid loss in the patients. So the patients who actually got that drug had, had better weight loss, they had better diuresis but it didn't fit with their symptoms, which was fairly interesting. There was another late breaker that was presented yesterday looking at BNP-guided therapies. Uh, and um, the, the results of that study were quite interesting and are, are aligned with some of the other trials that are going on right now looking at BNP-guided therapy. And then there was one other trial that was presented at the late breakers looking at a social, work, a social worker uh, administered uh, a palliative care intervention to try to make sure that, that um, advanced care directives and things were being completed in a group of patients who was quite ill. And that trial also looked like it was positive. So I think, you know, um, there, were some, there were some really interesting common themes yesterday that were emerged out of the late-breaking clinical trials.